Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our, <laughs> what day is it today? Thursday, Thursday morning trading room. Uh, hang on a second here. We'll get the screen share going on. Okay, so here we are, um, the NASDAQ market. Again, I see there's a couple new people in the trading room this morning. Let me give you a quick overview of what you're looking at. Uh, we've got the complete DTS system here along with the Raptor. So here in the top left is the Hawk Microscalper. Top right is the Falcon Swing Trader. Bottom left, Eagle Trend Trader. Bottom right is the Raptor. Uh, the charts I'm following here are the NASDAQ. I'm also watching the Russell and the E-mini on my other monitor. And uh, we just opened up to a little bit of a gap. You can see the market back up near yesterday's highs. We kept rebounding off 7,300. Well, actually we only rebounded once and we came up short off 7,300, but that's where we are again. Um, yesterday, a fairly sideways kind of day overall, a lot of this kind of stuff going on. And then we had a little bit of a run up through the Asian and European sessions. So we are actually looking at a rather substantial downside gap at the moment. Sometimes it helps to take a bigger perspective of things. So if we take a look here at the daily, uh, you can see the market not really doing a whole heck of a lot the last couple of days as far as making up some distance, but look at the volume. The volume was very big uh, yesterday. Why is that important? Well, um, volume is one of these indicators that needs to confirm itself. And what I mean by that is if you have a big bar, there should be big volume, right? Big bar, big volume. Little bars should have small volume, but this one does not. This bar has big volume. What's significant about that? It might lead to a reversal, might. I can't say for sure just yet, but that's very often how reversals begin is buyers and sellers take up their positions early. And uh, obviously there will be buyers there looking for breakouts and there's going to be sellers looking for tops to hold. So we shall see. Uh, we're producing a few signals here for those of you who like your first in sync eagle signal. Well, you got that right here, and so far it's off. Oops, sorry, right here. I think this is the first one. Nope, that's the first one. Came right out of the opening bell, and it looks like it's making decent progress. I don't think you're quite to the profit target yet. No, not quite. Close, very close. I'm going to give uh, the market a few minutes here to settle in. Uh, you can see we're up to our primary resistance line on the Falcon. This is our support and resistance suite. These three lines tend to kind of set the tone for the day. It's not that they're stronger or weaker. It's just if the market gets above the primary resistance, 
we're probably going to stay a little bit more bullish. If it fails to get through, then we'll probably see it test the primary support zone. But so long as it stays within this mix here, it's going to be fairly balanced. The Raptor. The Raptor now, um, we got a very bullish band. Our first in sync Raptor signal was right here, that hard edge bounce. It looks like that had no difficulty finding the profit objective. And now we're kind of moving a little bit sideways again. All right, well, like I said, we'll just leave it alone here for a few minutes. We're only seven minutes into the session. Very often when I try to do something too early, I catch myself on the wrong side of a position. Although right now, it looks as though the buyers have things well in hand. So we saw that early flurry. Definitely starting the day with a bullish flavor.
All right. A little bit of a pause in the action here. Not a big surprise, given, of course, that it's still fairly early. We're approaching that quarter to the hour mark. This is the time where very often the market does a little bit of a head fake. Uh, Paul's asking, is there any place we can share charts? Well, if you have the ability, uh, you can paste your charts uh, web address into the chat window and I can display it. Otherwise, what you can do is you can email it to me and just let me know what's on the way and I will retrieve it. Okay, things getting a little bit softer. We're introducing some yellow bars now on the Hawk. Uh, this still qualifies as a four arrow consolidation. And as I was speaking, it slipped into a red bar buy. Now the red bar buy is one of these signals that uh, you can either take with trend, in which case I think a test of the, the high is in order before we get a reversal. Or you can look to short the failure. So essentially setting up for a possible counter trend move. This is um, maybe a little riskier, although Paul says the YM and the Russell both selling off. All right, well, let's throw an order in there. We'll see what what we get. Now, here on the Raptor, we're probably producing a number two signal. And yes, lo and behold, there we are. So same type of idea. The Raptor actually a hybrid of the Hawk, the Falcon, and the Eagle picking up on that same signal that we're seeing on the Hawk. So here's a number two signal. Uh, I mentioned this the other day, but your number two signals on the Raptor are going to be better signals when your band is a little bit broader. 
So it looks like the top of the band around 7307 and down here at 7295, what is that? Uh, 18, seven, yeah, 17, 18 ticks. No, sorry. It's too early to do math. No, that's right. 22 ticks. 22 points. That's uh, that's a fairly broad, fairly broad channel. And so a reversal certainly uh, does seem possible. About 48, 50 ticks. When it gets to be about 50 ticks broad, then very often we'll see a bit of a reverse. And here we go. We got that little bit of a move lower. I think uh, it should have engaged my hawk signal, which it did. Did it slip me? No, it did not. Nice for a change. Now, you don't need to trade these red bar buys, these signals that develop near the end of a trend uh, you can simply use as an early warning that perhaps the trend is reversing or getting ready to reverse. Because if this does reverse, it will turn into a first micro macro cross lower. And so there was a half decent opportunity for a, a nice little uh, scalp move. And likewise, here on the Raptor, the hard edge of the trading band is your ultimate target on that trade. And let's see if they sneak down to that. They're thinking about it. Getting a little bit more buying pressure come in. The Geiger counter here uh, was pulled hard over. There we go. Um, what you want to see is you want to see it pull over and get sticky. And we technically, we did not intersect the hard edge, but it looks like we're getting some sort of reaction there. Remember, before a market reverses, it usually makes a retest, a test of the extreme, I call it. I didn't coin the phrase. I forget exactly where I heard it. But uh, the test of the extreme, in this case, the extreme is the high. We're going to watch the market rally up. And if it fails, once again, it tells us that the buyers are done and that the market is probably going to head the other way. This is why on those counter trend signals as well, 
that 2-3-2 two, two combination is fairly powerful. So now we're looking at the hard edge bounce. We're looking at the buyers trying to rally the market up. And uh, if they can't do it, then uh, the market will very likely reverse from here. Uh, look at that. We're getting a little bit of a, a little bit of a bullish break after all. So that number three signal, pretty strong so far, which um, Steve's question here is timely. <laughs> Steve asks, let's say you draw a trend line or a box and you want to see the trade or you want to trade the breakout, should you set your buy or sell outside the breakout line or let the price break out and see how it reacts within the first minute or so? Excellent, excellent question. A good trading friend of mine always used to say, never trust a breakout. The problem is that many breakouts give you the old fake break or as I like to call it, the one tick trend. <laughs> All right, let's take a look first at the sideways break. So let's say you've identified this as a little bit of a sideways trading range. So Steve says, should I just throw my entry order above and below that trading range and trade the breakout or should I let it break out first and see how it reacts. I think you should let it break out first and see how it reacts. So here we have the breakout. This gave you a quick little retest and a rally, but very often you'll get something a little bit more substantial. So long as the market does not make a major retracement back inside the trading range, you're usually pretty safe to buy the next rally attempt. If this had come, and this is a, a tight channel, relatively speaking, so you gotta, you, you gotta kind of balance everything here. If this were a broader channel, you know, let's say this channel was 
well, okay, no, we'll just go with it like it is. But uh, the idea is when the market breaks, obviously there's sellers up at the top of this trading range, right? They sold here, they sold again here. So they're selling again when the market tries to break out. So there's obviously gonna be some selling. It's going to try to force the market back in. This is why you normally cannot trust the initial break. Once it, it breaks and reacts, however, then you have a better idea whether the breakout is going to hold or not. In this case, it looks as though the buyers are going to try to rally it up. So this is going to be your best bet to buy right here. And as it turned out, you got a little bit of a rally. So let's take a look now where we're at because we had kind of the same deal going on. This time the trading range looking a little bit more like this. Okay, so here's the initial break. And right now you might be thinking, ah, oh, crap, I missed the big breakout. Well, maybe. The chances, chances are very good. Um, if you're watching it on a faster chart, like on a minute chart or something, you probably would have seen a retest happen anyhow after this breakout. But honestly, chances are really good, even if the market, let's say the market goes up here, goes a little bit higher, and you think, oh yeah, okay, way to go, Eric, you blew it. Chances are pretty good that the market will still come back and retest this zone. Now, I've seen it sometimes take an hour after a breakout, especially if it makes a decent run up. It will take an hour to come back and retest that zone, but it will retest it. And you can see this for yourself. You can go through your charts and you can see for yourself how the market will break out, come back, retest. Sometimes it will retest it right to the number. Sometimes it'll come up short and react early. Uh, sometimes it will even drift back into the zone a little bit. And again, so long as it doesn't go too deep, you're okay to try to buy the next rally attempt. If, however, you know, it starts drifting, let's say it does one of these, it comes back here, does a little rally attempt, and then decides to drift back into the trading range, and we're about halfway into this range, forget the next buy signal. Chances, or the, the chances are the market is probably going to move sideways. You're gonna get a lot of this kind of stuff going on. And there might be enough in there that you can scalp, but you're just gonna end up moving sideways again. The market breaks out, retests, comes back into the range, doesn't feel like breaking out anymore. That's essentially what, what happens. Trend lines. Trend lines, you could treat the same way. Usually, however, and this might be a little bit more difficult to demonstrate here, but let's say we drew a trend line like this. All right, just a short little short-term trend line. We see a little bit of a market channel building maybe. Trend lines tend to recover when they break. So that doesn't always mean there isn't an opportunity when they do break. This is why I was a little hesitant to mention it because this is where we scalped on the hawk. But trend lines tend to recover after breakouts. So if you have something that you can actually define as a trend and then the market breaks it, you can look for a recovery opportunity in which case that would make this a fairly good buying opportunity. 
tricky part with trend lines is that they keep breaking, so you keep having to redraw them. Uh, what color was I going with here? See, so even if you if you had drawn the short term trend line or the big bigger trend line, the end result is the same. Uh, the market breaks and recovers. So you're going to find that a lot with trend lines that they tend to break and then try to recover. So here you could draw a trend line like so. Oh, corn silk, wrong color. Sorry, I'm a little uh, <laughs> I'm a little messed up this way. I got to have them all the same color. There we go. All right. <laughs> no, I'm not OCD, honest. <laughs> okay, so here now we have a, a fairly bullish trend line. So when this trend line breaks, we can anticipate that the buyers will try to recover the trend line. So trend line breaks, I would treat a little bit differently than uh, trading range breaks. Trading range breaks, I would definitely look for a retest. Trend line breaks, I look for recovery. I think that's because a lot of traders When they're trading uh, breakouts, know that there's going to be at least, let's go back to this one, they're going to know there's at least a short-term selling opportunity. So you've got limit traders, traders who are actually putting their sell orders up here already. They're throwing their sell orders in there or maybe a tick or two higher. They've got their sell orders there waiting for the market to touch this price level, probably 7,300. And so the market touches that price. Their stops are probably I don't know, maybe 7305. They won't be very far away anyhow. And these traders will just be looking for a quick little move lower, a little scalp opportunity. Uh, they're probably a little scalp going on right there. Certainly some scalping going on here. But then when you get the retest, it shows you that, yeah, the buyers are actually serious about buying into this market. This is why sometimes you'll hear me say, this is the last chance for the buyers or the last chance for the sellers. Because if they don't recover the market at this point, after breaking out, then you got yourself a retest and probably a fairly clear indication the market's going to try to head lower. Okay, fairly solid breakout so far. But that was a that was an excellent question, Steve. I think we can safely call this a, a bull market today.
our trading band getting rather broad again. Looks like it's a good 20 points right now, 73.04, well, maybe 17, 18 points broad. Not looking for a reversal just yet. All right, looks like the Eagle actually giving us a really solid uh, hard edge bounce that coincided with the hard edge bounce here on the Raptor and the uh, trend change signal here on the Falcon as well. So a few things really coming together to give us a very solid move. You know, the thing with trading, folks, is you will never, ever have all the pieces to the puzzle. You always have to make your best assessment of what's going on. And then it's really comes down to trade management, it comes down to uh, not overexposing yourself to the market containing your, your risk exposure the best you can. Try not to let it turn into a, uh, a very expensive video game. <laughs> uh, nope, gets the prize for being the first person to ask me today about Trade Manager. I just checked my email and nobody has asked me about Trade Manager and Ninja 8 yet. <laughs> nope, you're the first one to ask me today. No word of a lie, folks. I got to get uh, at least three or four inquiries a day regarding Trade Manager. I know it's... Um, it's frustrating. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I can tell you that. Uh, it looks as though Ninja has finally stopped rewriting Ninja 8. So we may actually be able to program Trade Manager now. But uh, to answer your question, no, I don't have an ETA yet. I did send an email to the programmers uh, to see if they could give me an ETA, and uh, they're going to try to wrap their heads around it. Believe me that I'm as tired of telling everybody that Ninja 8 hasn't been stable enough for us to reprogram Trade Manager as you are tired of hearing me tell you that Ninja 8 <laughs> has not been stable enough to reprogram Trade Manager. <clears throat> they really dropped the bomb on us with that one. They totally rewrote the graphical interface. 
the way their charts print, the way the, the bars are formulated. It was one thing to rewrite the DTS and Raptor, but the trade manager, as you can imagine, is a pretty sophisticated piece of software. is so sophisticated in fact those of you new in the room might get a kick out of this one of the programmers uh, actually writes code for cruise missiles for the u.s government <laughs> that's the caliber of programmers we reach out to to make sure the software works correctly so when he tells me uh eric it, i can't make it work <laughs> You really can't make it work. <laughs> yeah. Don't fret, Steve. Steve says, I missed the long at 9.52, and now I think my day is done. Ugh. Yeah, maybe. Obviously, I missed it, too. Um, it happens. It happens all the time. You guys see me miss moves all the time as well. There will be a counter move. There will be another uh, rally attempt. It, the market, I would say, is full on bull today. So we may have to sit here and wait for a little while, but that's the hard part in trading. Uh, good question here from Mickey, for you new Raptor owners. Uh, Mickey asks, if you have just purchased the Raptor 2.0, is there any reason to consider purchasing the Eagle, the Hawk, or the Falcon? Um, <clears throat> okay, first let me put you, your Raptor owner's mind at ease. You do have a complete trading system in the Raptor. The Raptor incorporates elements of the, the Hawk, the Falcon, and the Eagle. In fact, the Raptor is a blend of the Hawk, the Falcon, and the Eagle. That's the, what drives the Raptor programming. Some traders, however, like the sophist sophistication of the DTS system in that you have a separate tool to deal with every market condition. 
The Raptor will duplicate most of the signals, but sometimes it's helpful to see things from different perspectives as well. The programming for all these indicators is different. What I mean is, you know, a lot of times what traders will do is they'll say, oh, I'm watching a five minute or a minute chart to scalp and I'm watching a 15 minute chart to swing trade and a hourly chart to trend trade. Well, that's a rough approximation of scalping, swing trading and trend trading. These systems have been specifically designed to pick up scalp signals, swing trade signals and trending signals. So to that end, it offers you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more detail of what's going on. Like uh, I think it was yesterday or maybe the other week before we took the break, the market condition was such that we had a lot of back and forth going on. And yet the Hawk scalper clearly still showed some buying opportunities because hey that's what the hawk scalper does right finds you a short-term opportunity um i know the falcon owners will swear by the falcon uh, it's a very powerful trading tool the trend change signals very reliable as are the late filter entry signals that you see me pointing out all the time if I can find you one now, oh, here's one. So late filter entry signal filter goes out of sync, comes back into sync. The trend line never changing color. This one took a little while to actually start to rally. And it's probably because it was uh, kind of in the middle of the Asian session, not the most popular time to be trading the NASDAQ, but still a very, very reliable signal you very rarely see that signal fail. And I do mean very rarely. Uh, that signal or those signals will very often duplicate on the Raptor. The Falcon is the primary signal engine on the uh, Raptor system. It doesn't always present the same way. It will usually present as a number three signal, that late filter entry. And then of course you have the Eagle, which um, tries to give you the overall market trend. Um, when the DTS system first came out, pre-Raptor days, I know there were some traders who would use the Eagle to give you a bird's eye view, if you ex excuse the pun, and they'll only, they would only trade hawk and falcon signals that were in sync with the eagle not a bad way to go you can see the eagle bands duplicated here on the raptor in fact we actually doubled up the bands to give you a couple more opportunities so i guess mickey at the end of the day it depends on how much opportunity you want um is it helpful to have the complete system i would say yes uh is it necessary no <laughs> there you go i know it's a rather incomplete answer but it's the best i can do I'm wondering whether we're going to top out here. We got a little bit of a sideways deal going on. We're starting to 
run over these numbers here around the 7330 area, not really getting too far outside of there. Um, I would welcome a hard edge bounce. Uh, okay, here's one of these opportunities. We don't really have a Raptor signal, uh, but here on the Falcon, look, we've got a late filter entry signal and there it is right there. Uh, is this signal going to produce on the Raptor? Absolutely it will. It's right here. But it's not as easy to identify. It doesn't actually qualify as one of our high probability signals with the Raptor. But that's why you have these discretionary signals as well, is that you can look at the uh, chart and you can say, okay, the market's in a strong trend. I missed the first signal. Uh, maybe I'll try to get on board with one of these discretionary signals. This is now the situation where it becomes a game of trade management, right? So let's say you take a look at getting in here it's where can I cover the trade? Well, at the very least, I, I want to cover it down toward the hard edge because if the market reverses, where is it going to go? It's going to try to get back here to the hard edge. If I can afford this risk, then I take the trade. Or you may take a look at it and you may say, all right, uh, this was the breakout zone from before. Sorry, I told you I have a little problem with this, didn't I? <laughs> okay, you may say, uh, this was the breakout zone from before. Um, the market may, you know, take the next 20, 30 minutes and drift down here. So if I get in here and I'm in too early, maybe I need to place my initial stop down there and trade manager will say, nope, sorry, Eric, you can't afford that. In which case, I may have to pass on the trade. I find what the time you run into trouble is when you start to get anxious on the trade because you say, oh, it's, you know, it's a late filter entry signal. I, I have to take the trade. It's a, it's a high probability signal. The times you're going to run into trouble on the trade is when you jam your stops in too tight. Let's say you throw your stops in there. And yes, you can adjust your risk percentage. You don't have to go in for the full 2%. I'm just doing this for a dramatic effect. We are getting a little bit, we're about an hour in the session, which is very often when we will see a reversal. But um, the point is that the market may come down here now and tag you out before you've even had a chance to realize profit. So uh, a reasonable counter trend opportunity. The Raptor is good at picking up counter trend opportunities. Again, you'll do better when the band is a little bit broader. Uh, because the trend is so strong, you might look for a second push opportunity, meaning we let the signal engage and then we wait for the reaction and use that bar as our entry bar. Well, we're still bouncing around here a little bit, but if you consider that enough of a bullish reaction, you could look to short when that market continues lower. And of course, stops need to go above the high. Because it's counter trend, I would almost always take profit on target. All right, 
we'll put that away for now. We'll go back now to our struggling late fin filter entry signal. Did I wait long enough this time? Yes, the filter came back into sync. So the filter was out of sync, comes back into sync, and then the signal completes. And oh, it looks like I got, got my one tick trend going on. I love it when that happens. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I've started with a rather broad um, exit order, as you can see. And I'm just looking for an opportunity to bring it up. I don't want to bring it up too quickly, as tempting as that is. I don't want to get myself stopped out too early. And quick little rally up as we uh, trapped some of the sellers out of their trades and we managed to get to our profit target. Hooray! So, like I said, those late filter entry signals, very, very powerful signals. And even these discretionary signals. You know, if you, they're here to let you get into a trade that you feel that you've missed. You know, you're looking at this. Don't overthink this, folks, honestly. Um, I wish I could remember the fellow's name. They're, they interviewed traders on the trading floor when there was still a trading floor. This is years ago. And there was one fellow who was far and away uh, the best trader on the floor. And they got talking to him because he wasn't especially smart. <laughs> this is, this is going to sound odd, but he wasn't especially smart. He didn't come from an I Ivy League school or anything like that. And uh, they asked him, why are you such a good trader? And people who are much smarter than you don't do as well um, because they were comparing grades of, of all these traders. And I guess he was like a C plus student. And he said, as a C plus student, he was used to being wrong. He was used to being wrong a lot. He had no problems being wrong. You know, it didn't affect his ego because he was wrong a lot. Whereas you take these A plus students, these Ivy League school students, they have a lot of their ego invested in their decisions, right? They, they're not wrong very often. They're not used to being wrong. So my point is they have a tendency to overthink things. Don't overthink things. If the trend is up and you feel you've missed the move, all right, well, can I afford the risk if I buy in here? There's a buy signal. What if I do a second push? Yeah, a second push is a good way to get into a trade, and it might allow me to uh, run a slightly tighter stop. 
If I'm okay with that risk amount, take the trade because it's with trend and who knows, it may just get up there and find your profit target. If not, let's pretend for a moment here, it did not hit the profit target. There's no reason that if you see the market starting to move against you a little bit here, that you can't adjust your stops somewhat. Let's say you bring your stops up here and let's pretend now for a moment that instead of going higher, the market actually uh, comes down and stops you out. All right, so your initial risk was about $300. You got stopped for 150. If your initial risk was set at 2%, well, now you've lost 1% of your trading capital. That's not the type of trading that's going to make you go broke. Right? That's actually, this is what I would refer to as a good loss. You did everything correctly, but the market still didn't go in your favor. Or, you know, uh, maybe you misread what was going on. Maybe the market wasn't really trending. Maybe the market was going sideways. So if you take a loss, don't beat yourself up for it. If you miss a move, don't beat yourself up for it. There's always another move. There's always another trade. Your goal is to try to find the best opportunities and take advantage of those. That is your job description. You cannot make the market do anything. Your, your goal is simply to take advantage of what the market is doing. That's it. And now we're on hold again. Uh, trade forecaster has changed into scalp mode. It may, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of swings going on here. It may 
maybe forecasting a little bit of a slowdown perhaps. So yesterday the market kind of uncomfortable around that 7300 area. Now it looks like we're getting a little bit of a re reaction as we're getting closer to 7350. The next resistance line actually printing 7361 half. We have moved two zones, which is typical when we see a breakout above the primary resistance or the primary support zone. Uh, this would have been zone one. This would mean zone two. Looks like we might be uh, producing another late filter entry signal. We have been rallying for well over an hour. I don't know. It's it will probably continue higher, but I don't know. I might be a little bit too much of a chicken to take it. <laughs> All right, the filter not in sync yet. Actually, the trend line's nice and flat. It may well um, produce a nice rally here. I'll demo it for you so you can see it. And then here on the Raptor. No, no hard edge bounce yet. I thought we might have had a hard edge bounce. The Raptor actually leaning more towards a reverse right now, I would say. Again, a very broad band. Might be looking at a little bit of a test of the extreme here. And then perhaps another number two signal printing. Uh, the Hawk did produce a macro pullback signal, so there's a, a chance for a scalp there. The Hawk definitely looking for a short-term move higher. All right, and here now this late filter entry signal printing. It's completed. You can see the filter back in sync. Trend line hasn't changed color. So you should go two swings back. There's swing one. There's swing two. All right, well, I do my best not to think when I'm trading. 
what's the expression when all else fails do as you're told <laughs> Did they slip me? Nope, no slip. Uh, they're thinking about it. Uh, the markets do have a tendency to get a little funny around whole numbers. Whole numbers being 7,300, 7,350, 7,400, 7,450, so on. My biggest concern with this signal is uh, that we've already had a late filter entry signal produce within this trend and that the market has been marching along here for, well, for over an hour now without anything resembling a pullback. It's not going to continue forever that way. Um, you know, maybe the thing I should have done is wait for the second push opportunity. Yeah, see, I didn't think of that soon enough. The second push, again, just means you allow the signal to engage. You see where it flinches. In this case, I would be using this bar right here as my signal bar. And I could have placed my entry just above there. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. All right, a little bit of a reverse going on as a possible possible trend change. 
uh, signals starting to build. Again, you can't get too excited because uh, the market is in an uptrend. If we draw ourselves a trend line here, you can see we've just had the trend line break and as such, we would anticipate a little bit of a bullish reaction. Hopefully we'll get that. We'll, we'll see here shortly. And uh, certainly on that next bullish reaction, I would consider becoming a lot more aggressive with my exit stops. Uh, you need to remember as well, or remember, many of you won't know this, the market moves in waves, right? So, you know, let's take a look at the eagle. The eagle might show this better. I refer to them as legs. Sometimes they're referred to as waves. Uh, I'm sure they've got all kinds of names. Most of the markets, uh, at least as far as the eagle is concerned, will tend to move, have a couple of legs in a move. So this might have been leg number one, and this is leg number two. Occasionally, you'll get a third leg in the eagle, although it is rare. Now, uh, some of you may look at this and just say, no, that's leg number one right there. There was no pause. When you get the little more pronounced back and forth action going on, it's a little bit easier to discern. There's leg one. Right? Then you have a pullback, and this now would be leg two. The falcon will probably produce at least three legs in a move. And this will be true for the raptor as well. So again, it, it, it's a little bit subjective because it depends, well, when am I going to start counting the leg? Am I going to start counting it from the market open? Well, that's probably what I would do. So the market opens here. That would be leg one, I would say. This is possibly leg two, which would make this leg three. My point is that the markets don't run indefinitely. They do get tired. They do, you know, flip-flop a little bit. I'm not saying this signal won't work out. I'm just saying it may take a while to get there. We've definitely got a little bit of a, a battle going on between the two, the buyers and the sellers. And it may even be turning over at this point. Like I said, We've seen an uptrend, well, going on an hour and 20 minutes now. It's a long time for the market to be going one direction.
There could be some profit taking going into the lunch hour as well. Traders who have been long from the open uh, looking at the market and saying, yeah, it might be time to take some profit. And so they're peeling off some of their positions. Some traders, uh, especially traders who trade serious volume, will reduce their risk exposure, not by rolling their stops up, but by reducing the number of contracts they're carrying. So in other words, you know, they may start with a stop way down here, way down below that swing or even below the, the morning low, right? And let's say they've got 50 contracts in play. Well, that is a huge risk for 50 contracts, right? So rather than threaten their, their trade and getting stopped out early by rolling their stops up, you know, really tight, what they'll do is if they had 50 contracts, they may take 25 contracts off. So now they've effectively reduced their risk exposure by half. That's a little something to keep in mind for those of you who are able to trade multiple contracts. It's, um, it's an interesting way to reduce your risk without getting your stops um, too cozy to the marketplace. Okay, it's decision time for the buyers now. They gotta show up if they're gonna hold this market. Otherwise, this little rally attempt is going to fail and um, we're gonna blow through the 73.30 area. I'm thinking about bringing my stops up a little bit, but I'm also trying to give them a chance playing um, an expensive version of keep away. Okay, the Falcon now uh, working on a trend change signal. We probably got a number two signal here on the Raptor, and sure enough, we did. So a nice little test of the extreme. There's the number two signal. Uh, the hard edge of the trading band is the objective for this signal, and it looks like if you haven't already taken profit on target, you should be awfully close. Yep, there you go. So you hit your profit objective on a little bit of a reverse. Uh, the buyers were trying to show up here for a moment, but so far, 
So far, no buyers. 73.30 was a big number, so I would anticipate to see some buying come in. At this point, however, uh, my trade is a little bit more of a management issue. I do expect another rally, after which time I'm gonna to start to roll my stops in a little bit more aggressively. The market does things in pairs, right? So here, the sellers have tried to move the market lower once, they tried to move it lower twice. Buyers have tried to move it up once. This is gonna be the buyer's second attempt. And if they can't hold on to that one, well, then the market's probably gonna reverse and it'll, it will be time to go. But uh, if I can manage the trade well, I should at least get a break even or who knows, perhaps even see another run at the profit target at the highs. All right, everyone, um, we're gonna call it a day. Uh, if you're gonna continue to trade today, the market is bullish. Uh, we may not see a full-blown rally continue. Uh, 73.50, I would not be surprised to see today. But more likely than not, the market's just going to end up going sideways from here. All right. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have yourselves a great day. Bye for now.